I'm back, guys, with another makeup video. I know. I'm keeping on track for once in my life. The thing is, ever since I did my last makeup video, it was just like sparked and re-inspired and I'm like gassed to do makeup videos, so we're here again. An everyday makeup look wasn't on the agenda, but like two reasons. Number one, I thought you don't really know products I've been maybe obsessed with because it's been a while. And on top of that, you guys wanted to know. Like I, you guys have been so sweet. You're like, oh my God, Jordan, you're glowing. What are you doing? What products are you using? I need to see. And of course, in normal Jordan lips confession, of course I'll show you. Listen, I'm going to put it all in one space. I thought I'd do a video. So if you're interested, if you've been vibing with what has been on my face, this is for you. This is the makeup look. So it's very, almost like fresh face, still very me, something that is true to me and comfortable. Covered up type of skin, the sort of feathery brow, no lashes, um, but just something really pulled together and pretty without being an overload, right? Now, of course, this is what I wear. Day-to-day -day things, this is what I'm gonna pull out. And of course, I don't need to say it, but I don't wear makeup every single day. But if I do, you bet your ass these are the products. And by the way, just get a list ready, pen and paper. There's some gems in here that I know you're gonna want, I promise. Oh, and also, let me talk about the hair real quick. I, now listen, I will always love my short hair. I feel like that's me at heart, but the long hair right now, Oh, I go through phases, but you know, I morph into 50 different people throughout the year, so. <laughs> these are clipping extensions from Lula Bells. This isn't spawning or anything, by the way, this is just me telling. The new Lula Bells, like half up, half down set. So it's made, like these hair extensions are made for half up, half down. So you get the ponytail extension and then you get clippings for the bottom half. Now you guys know how short and blunt cut my hair is. And the fact that I've managed to do this, I mean, let me show you the back. Side note, if you see any straight bits of my real hair, it's because I didn't curl my hair and wave it. I'm not going anywhere. So if there's some funky bits, that's why. But Look at this. Look, it's like blended in. It's literally short hair friendly, which is very rare from clipping extensions. The straight one that they do didn't work for me at all, as you can probably imagine. You could see just hair, just my hair, Lula Bells. The curly one though is fab, and look how much hair like you get as well. Like imagine, like look at this. It's like a mane. Just wanted to let you know in case she was one of those people that were like screaming at the camera asking me where they were from. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get into it. A makeup look I've been loving and products I've been loving too, so. Let's go. You guys probably know this about me already, but my first step that I always do pretty much no matter what is the eyebrows. Just because I use something pretty hardcore. So I almost need like space to be able to, to wipe it away and clean it up. That is this. Mine is busted and beat. It's because I use it every single day. <laughs> every time I wear makeup, I mean, because I do not wear makeup every single day. Trust me. I said it before on my channel, the got to be glue is my Mm, 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 mm. Fave thing to use if you don't want your eyebrows to move throughout the day, you don't want them to budge. I mean, AM to PM, baby, you could be wearing this for 24 hours, your eyebrows will stay looking the same. I grab a pack of those disposable spoolies and I will use this until it's literally like, you can't use it anymore until it's like clogged up basically. These are literally pens, or you can use the end of an eyebrow pencil. I used to do that, but then I kept ruining the end of a decent eyebrow pencil. And I just thought, mm, it's a little bit gross. So we got these. I literally just stick that in, give it a swirl, come out and then it's coated in product. Comb the product through my brows. Um, and then I also will use my finger to just flatten it. Once it starts to dry down and go a bit tacky, I take the tip of the spoolie and just drag it along the top. This will shape the hairs into place so they're not obviously completely upright. That is how I get that laminated soap brow effect with shape. I just keep coming through and getting them how I want them basically until they're fully dry. By the way, I apologize if you've seen me do this a million times before. I know watching someone do their eyebrows isn't the most exciting thing in the world. This is for the people that are new though and have never seen me do it and wanna know how I do it. It's dead easy. Okay, then I grab a baby wipe or you could use makeup remover. I use this to get rid of any excess glue that is on my skin. You wanna make sure you definitely remove this. Otherwise, when you apply your foundation, you get that crusty flakiness around it. As the day progresses, if the glue's on your skin, you'll notice it will start to peel away and you'll see all these little like white flaky bits around your brow, which we just don't want. Okay, cool, cool. Then super easy. Grab a concealer brush and a concealer. I do this before I fill in my brow. I find that it helps to obviously give us shape, but also stop you overfilling in your brows because this almost gives you a guide so you can really see where the gaps are, where you need to fill in, then you're not doing the most. I kind of start with my arches and then I follow the tail down. Low-key, my eyebrows do need plucking, so just ignore that. And then I start to bring it in towards the front, and then I will drag that concealer down, and I'll use it just to prime my eyelids while I'm there. Honestly, this is the best concealer you'll ever use. I don't care. Don't at me. Too Faced Born this way. I use this underneath my eyes in a bit as well. Oh my god, I look fucking crazy. <laughs> you'll see this on my skin in a bit. I'm telling you, this is one of the best concealers you can buy out there. Then, in terms of filling it in, I, I like pencils, markers, powders. Kind of just depends on what I'm vibing with that particular day. One thing you will notice about me, though, is in terms of like my everyday makeup look for each product like each category like i don't know brows bronzers blush 
foundations, whatever, you'll notice I like to have like two or three products in each one of those categories, just because it depends what I'm vibing with that day, what I'm feeling, and then I have option as well. A brand's brow stuff that I do really like though is Refai. I think she does some amazing products. I'm gonna go in though with the Refai like micro thin brow pencil. Annoyingly, I don't know what this is called or the shade, which kind of trips me out because I don't know what this is. <laughs> Fill in any little gaps. I've got some there. There's also some here obviously on the tail. I want to try and fill in and finish off like that. A little bit on the arch too. See that though? It's a good little pencil because you can sort of fake and mimic little hairs, especially at the front of your eyebrow. And that is pretty much it, to be honest. I mean, I know these brows aren't going to be everybody's cup of tea, but baby, some people like zero sugars in their tea and some people like 10. You're not consuming it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Next step, it's gotta be skin. Sometimes I do skin first, sometimes I do eyes. It just depends what I'm feeling. I'm gonna show you my skin prep too, because I feel like skin prep is so important to fully get the best out of your makeup products for your skin, right? So for me, if I've not prepped my skin properly, I mean, think about it, right? Like you won't have that nice, smooth, ready for makeup base that you want, therefore your makeup products might not sit as well, right? So if you're struggling with makeup products, guys, think like, could it be you're not doing proper skin prep? Do you know what I mean? Don't give up on your makeup products until you've kind of analyzed all areas. Now I'm not saying you need to put on about 50 million different products before your makeup. Just stick to the essentials underneath your makeup because you don't want like layers. Always moisturize guys. That is my top thing. I don't give a fuck what skin type you have. Get one that caters to your skin type. That's exactly what I do. I love this one from Ole Henriksen. It's the Balance Cold Plunge Pore Remedy Moisturizer. This, okay, is basically a moisturizer and primer in one. It smells divine. The reason I love this is because it is almost a cooling sensation, so it feels nice on the skin. But the biggest thing is it hydrates my skin, but will help to balance out my oils because if you're like me and you have crazy oily skin, this keeps the moisture in, but without doing the most, you know? There's types of ingredients in this that help like with pores, basically just smoothing and prepping your skin. Honestly, this feels so good. Like, oh, it just feels delish. You know, you feel like your skin just is like, <laughs> like soaking it up. Let this sink in guys. Give it a second to do what it needs to do. This is what I've been using for my primer at the moment. I've been loving it. It's the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. This is new. Guys, this smells of watermelon and I'm a sucker for anything watermelon. Honestly, just cover me in it. Couple pumps. Now this is that sticky, like primer that gives you grip, that is this. So obviously it will give you the glow because of the texture. It's almost like a like a gel consistency, but give it about 30 seconds just to sort of dry down. This will become tacky. And then of course, when you put your makeup products on top, it will give it something to stick to. I mean, the glow itself is unreal to be fair. But like, I mean, you can probably already start to see. We're going tacky. Like it's getting that grip to it. If you're into primers like that, you'll love this. Then one more last thing. I know we will get into it. RCMA powder on your damp sponge, pick some up, kind of like that. And I'm gonna press this on any areas where I can get excessively oily. So my nose, my chin, the center of my forehead. Top tip, you guys, if you have oily skin, do this. I promise, a game changer. Foundation, I've kind of been loving two, to be honest. So it's either the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. And let me tell you, this is beautiful, okay? It's like coverage, but you don't feel it on your skin, if that makes sense. And it lasts lovely on the skin. This is actually quite a new addition to me, but I've been really enjoying it. Or I've been going back to this, the two face born this way we all know about this right like medium to full coverage again kind of undetectable on the skin like you don't feel it i think today though we're gonna go for charlotte tilbs charlotte tilbs do you mind me calling you that it's like we're on a friend basis she doesn't know who the frick i am <laughs> right now that that's shaken up i like to use a flat top brush at the moment and also my foundation is in six neutral I'm aware this color looks a little crazy right now. It might be a little bit too light, but by the time I've sort of, you know, concealed, bronzed, add color back into the skin, it'll be fine. We are covered, but it's still got that like radiant type of finish. Do you know what I mean? It still has that like healthy glow. I mean, if I zoom you in so you can see my skin up close. It's like improved my skin like that. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't look like makeup. It's not that type of product. What I am saying though, is if you're someone that likes foundation and to cover and basically make your skin look flawless, you're looking at it. Concealer, we're kicking it with the Too Faced Born This Way. I am telling you, okay, this concealer is fucking amazing. Honestly. Mine's in vanilla, by the way. There's also another color that I really like, but I just have this one right now. I hit here and then here, because I kind of like it to, to lift. And of course, the places I like to highlight too, so chin, cupid's bone, nose, forehead. When I tell you that this just covers, but so like, it's just yummy. It's just yummy. One of those concealers that I always go back to. I try out other ones and I use other ones, but this is 
the one I always can rely on. If you had a gun to my head and you were like, Jordan, one concealer you can use for the rest of your life, it would be this. Tapping it in, obviously not to disturb the foundation underneath, and I pull it right back. Can you see I've almost created that line to give the illusion of more of like a lifted appearance? That's what I like to do. This sponge is great for that, by the way. I think this is by Morphe. Bring back and then keep that line because of the way the sponge is cut. This combination, I know it looks a little like I'm crazy right now, but honestly, this is the dreamiest combination ever. Look, look at my skin. Look at her. Look at her. Not suck my own dick, but it looks pretty good. It's thanks to the makeup products, okay? <laughs> we fake it till we make it. I love them, seriously. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Cream contour now, you know I've gotta do it. For me, now I've been using this one basically since I come out the womb. I come out the womb like holding this. It's the Primark Foundation and Contour Stick in Chai or Caramel, I use both. Two pound, two pound 50, it is for cream contour. Like it is perfect, hence why I always tell you guys like go get it, go get it. She still has my heart, but we have a newbie guys that I've really been enjoying and it's by Makeup Revolution. Almost reminds me of a dupe of the, is it the Chanel pot? I don't know whether it is because it comes in like a pot and not a stick. Never tried that one, so I wouldn't know, but this one, I love and I love the tone of it as well. This is in, it just says Inspire bronzer. I take a flat top type of brush and then I just coat my brush in the product and I just start to press it into my skin. I like this one because it's really buildable. For every day that's perfect as well because you can kind of customize how, you know, intense you want to go. I mean, you can already see just from that, the difference it's subtle but effective. Blends like an absolute dream on the skin and I feel like it blends with the already existing products on my skin and it just gives you the most beautiful flush of color. I feel like this product is really good if you are almost scared of cream contour because you can see, look, like I'm going in, like I'm not being shy, pressing it on and you can see it's not intense straight away. You have time to, to get your desired look basically. And the tone of it is nice too. I feel like it's quite almost neutral. It's more probably ticking on the warmer side, but I use this as well to just cream contour my nose. Some on the tip, then also take some down at the sides of my nose, I almost create just like two little lines. Always make sure I blend it up and underneath my brows, any cream contour, whatever cream contour I'm using, I always just use on my nose too. Then what I like to do is cream blush as well. I'm the type of bitch that I will use cream products and then powders on top. Layering is what I like to do, it's my favorite thing. I've really been enjoying one of these two at the moment, or the Refi Beauty ones, but the She Glam, this is Shein's makeup range. Clear and bright liquid blush, this is in Luster. This is beautiful, if you like glow with your blush and something more of like a liquid that just sort of blends into the skin, this is beautiful. Or I've been loving the Morphe 2 Perk Up Cheek and Lip Colors. These are literally just like wind up little cream blushes. I think I'm gonna use these ones today. This color is beautiful. This is Pink Me Up, which is, I mean, it looks a little bright on camera, but personally, I like to sort of like warm this up on the back of my hand. Pick that product up with my beauty blender and then just bounce it onto the skin. This product's really creamy anyway, but I like to do this just so I don't get any, you know, pull or tug on the skin. That way we're not disturbing any product underneath. I feel like it just helps to like initiate the blend as well. Some more, layer it up. Any excess I pop on my chin and also like my forehead as well, just to get that overall sort of flush of color. Placement of blush, by the way, for me personally, I like that more lifted appearance to my face. So I stick to the more cheekbone area and avoid the apples. Where you place your blush will impact the shape of your face. So if you're someone, for example, that wants, you know, more of a rounder cheek appearance, Keep it more centered. Now, as beautiful as this glow looks on the skin, personally, I have to set. Let me just take my sponge really quickly just to get rid of any little creasing underneath my eyes. And I still, to be honest, when it comes to powder, I use the same sort of thing. RCMA No Color Powder is a really lovely one. Also the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. This is the honey version though, so it has more of like a warmer yellowy type of tint to it. Lovely for a more like tanned complexion. So I think I'm gonna use that one today. Wet sponge as always, and then just press that into the skin. I like to come all the way back here as well. You can see that's just instantly smoothed that out. I'm also gonna press a little bit down the sides of my nose and just let that do its thing for a minute. I don't particularly like to bake on my skin. I don't really feel like it needs it, but if I'm sort of more trying to carve an area out, so for example, I like my nose to look a little bit thinner. So I'll just sort of pack the product on there. Another place as well that I like to do is kind of carve out this area underneath, almost like reverse contouring. For the rest of my skin, I just like to use a big brush and like a really light amount of powder just to go over it. Once I've done that, I just like to press in and kind of dust away that excess powder that we've used to carve out just so it's not too intense. My little trick 
effect that I like to do is taking my Charlotte Tilbury Air Blush, Air Blush, Air Brush Flawless Finish Powder. This is in Fair though, so the lightest shade. And on my sponge, I just layer some up right down the sides of my nose and right down the center like that. And basically this is gonna help to make your nose look snatched. Now I'm gonna leave that there to just do its thing while I carry on. Okay, just trust me, it looks crazy now but just trust me. <laughs> Powder bronzer now, if you watched my last makeup video, you would have known I've discovered this and I have been using it since, by the way. So yes, I did find a new ferro bronzer. I'm obsessed. It's by Dior, but I promise it's worth every single penny. This is the Dior Forever Natural Bronze Bronzing Powder in, this is 05 Warm Bronze. It looks pretty dark in the pan, like it wouldn't work for my skin tone, but I promise on the skin it's lush. So good. It like bronzes and contours my skin at the same time. It's such like a nice neutral shade. Buffs into the skin so beautifully. I mean, if I do say this side to the other side so you can see the difference. Like you see that? It just brings your skin back to life and the formula is amazing. I don't know what they've put in this, but it's amazing. Now this blush that I'm about to use, okay? Just trust me because you're gonna think something's wrong. Use this right and I promise this is such a pretty blush and it will probably last you a lifetime because you need the smallest amount. Okay, this is the Doll Beauty Pretty Fly blush. It's in Let's Get Wavy. Now, I know, I know. Scary. Do I fiber brush? The bristles are looser, further apart. I feel like it picks up less product. That's it. That's all you need. Tap this onto the skin. You can even probably do both sides. It just depends on how intense you want it to be. But when this is blended out, it looks, I don't know, just like the prettiest shade of pink. A little bit down my nose too. I also take it a little on my eyelids too, like the excess, just to kind of join everything together. I've been loving these shades of blush recently. I still, don't get me wrong, I'm still obsessed with the peaches, the corals, that type of thing. But I don't know, I picked this up on a whim one day and now I keep using it. You see, like look at it in the pan, then look at it on my skin. You know, don't be scared. Highlight for me is one of those products that I kind of keep switching if I'm honest like I kind of one day will pick up this one and next day I'll pick up this one again this is another makeup product that I discovered in my last makeup video and I've pretty much been picking it up ever since to be honest it's the Soph X Revolution highlighter jewelry this is in cookies and cream I kind of just like dab between the two this is pretty intense by the way so you don't need like a lot with really light pressure I'll just sort of dust this onto the skin. You see what I mean by it's pretty intense and that was only a small amount. <laughs> I like to keep mine kind of in the center here. I don't like to pull mine back too far or bring it too far in. Just stick it at the highest point. So when I am forward, you can slightly see it, but it's mainly when I start to turn my head that you see like it reflects. A little bit onto my forehead as well, just to kind of give like an overall glow. And then I will put some on my nose in a minute as well once I finish the nose contour too. But yeah, that's so pretty, I love that. I then like to go back in with my blush brush, kind of make sure that there's no harsh edges and that just looks like part of your skin, do you know what I mean? She was crazy to me. I used to drown myself in highlighter. I mean like, like white lines. <laughs> that was the move, do you know what I mean? Like everybody used to do that. Whereas now I like, I mean, I still like the glow, but just not as intense. So I almost like it to look like a glow with within. Glow with within. Glow from within. <laughs> Let's finish off this nose. Nose contour hasn't changed, guys. Hula by Benefit is always my favorite. It's just the perfect tone. Crap, okay, I forgot to bring down the brush I normally use, but I'm just gonna use the one that I used for the cream contour. I'm just gonna wipe it off a bit. And to be honest, I just go over what's already existing there just to bring it out even more. I also find that layering up cream and powders and stuff helps this to last longer. If anywhere, this is the area of me that fades the quickest, especially like in this mask world we're living in. Any other extra thing I do, take a little bit. Right on the tip here, I like to create a little line just here, like that. See how it adds a circle here? So it almost lifts and makes the tip of my nose look a bit rounder. So I like to make mine slimmer and rounder. And that's what I do, guys. Not too complicated or difficult to do. Nose contour is one of those things though that does take practice. I pretty much do it, well, I was about to say I pretty much do it every time I do my, I do do it every time I do my makeup. I just, it's part of me now. And then I finish up with highlighting it. So I personally like right at the, like the bridge, the top of the bridge of my nose right here is where I like to put it. I don't like to put it directly on this part of my nose just for the whole oil situation. So right there and a little bit on the tip right there. And that's it. When it comes to my eye makeup kind of every day, I don't, I don't even think I've been wearing lashes really at the moment, to be honest. Some days I do, some days I don't. Majority of the time I don't. I've been enjoying being free, okay? And living the lash free life. I just like, like a mini wing to kind of give my eye some shape. I use eyeshadow to do that. And then just some mascara. So super, super easy. I take my bronzer 
to begin with. I'm actually just gonna use the Benefit Hoola. On a fluffy eyeshadow brush, and then starting on my outer corner, that's where I focus the product first. Kind of blending out, keeping it low though, I don't go too high up to my brow, and then I'll start to just wing it out. I'm kind of carefree with this, to be honest. I do keep more of a straight line here though, as you can see, I'm kind of just going back and forth rather than up and down. That way we keep to that more, you know, winged out effect. And then any excess on the brush, I'll bring right through this crease part here, more in the center of my eye. I just use this as a base color though, just to give the eyelid some type of color. That way when you go to do the wing, it just doesn't look as harsh, I guess. I just like it to look kind of soft and blown out. So I'm just gonna do the same thing on this eye. Okay, I apologize if the camera angle looks different or anything. No. Baby boy. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. There's a giant dog on the loose. Mummy's filming. She can't have a cuddle right now. I'm sorry. Please don't. Oh, thanks so much. Yep. Yeah, really wanted that. He's throwing a tantrum because I'm not cuddling him. Oh my God. Dobes. The one thing to know about dobes, they want love and attention and affection at all times of the day. He's cute as hell, but Doberman's for you. <laughs> anyway, I apologize if the angle or anything's changed. My camera battery died and then I went and had some lunch. I also just like bit my lip. Look at that. Like who bites their lip there? Look, it's like all swollen now. Anyway, <laughs> in terms of um, the actual wing, personally for everyday, I like eyeshadow because I find it to be a little bit softer. So I'm just gonna dip into one of my Be Perfect eyeshadow palettes. This is the Dream Big Manifest palette, which is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I mean, look. I am gonna use the black and brown in this, which obviously is a pretty like standard eyeshadow color, so you don't necessarily need a palette like this. However, if you're into makeup, this is fab to have in your makeup collection. In general, it's a sick eyeshadow palette. Be Perfect are actually my favorite eyeshadow formulas, so. Dipping into Wing It and then Inked, which is the black. I kind of like mix the two. Starting on the outer corner, I just sort of wing it out. I follow the angle of my um, bottom lash line. Then I go halfway on my eye, and then I sort of do a little mini triangle to join it in and then I'll just fill that in. Do any fine tune in. I don't like to thicken mine up or do anything too crazy. That to be honest is pretty much it. Same thing on this side. So one line straight out, halfway point on my lash line and then wing it out to create like a small triangle and then fill it in. With the concealer brush that I used earlier for my brows, I just use whatever's left on there just to kind of sharpen up the edge slightly and it would just help to clean up any sort of initial mistakes as well. But that's pretty much how I do my wing liner. Mascara, to be honest, guys, I kind of just use what I have. I don't really mind. At the moment, I've been using Benefit Roller Lash, which is fab. This is a really, really lovely mascara. I think especially if you have stubborn eyelashes or quite small ones, or even if you have naturally long lashes, this will make them look insane. However, I do think there are drugstore alternatives out there that are just as good, or at least like almost as good, if that makes sense. Um, it just depends what you want. This one's really good at lengthening though. And because I'm not gonna wear lashes, it does it quite quickly as well. It doesn't take a long time for this mascara to build up and make your lashes look fab. I also, Got it on my eye. I have to wait for that to dry now before I can flick it off. But I like to just put mascara on the outer half parts of my lashes and not the inner. Really roll that through and flick out. I feel like that helps to complement the wing and it kind of just makes the whole look look quite cut-eyed and feline, which is what I like. Final steps, guys, and then we're done. So let's do lips. This has become one of my new favorite lip combos, you guys. And we all know I love a glossy nude lip, okay? This combo is so yummy. If you're into that more like, not pink nude lip or like not too brown either, that like perfect, like warmer toned nude, Ugh, look no further. Morphe Sweet Tea Lip Liner. Either this, I know this is always sold out. Another good one is Cash Beauty Lip Liner in Rust Nude. I have this one today, so we're gonna use it. I always like to make sure that my lips are powdered and matte. That way the lip liner isn't slipping all on foundation. And I like to take away the color of my lips as well, just so I have a complete blank canvas. I, of course, like to go in and overline, so let me just do that. Once I've got my shave, I'm just gonna fill in all of the edges. And then this gloss. This is the game changer gloss. I feel like no one speaks about these and I love it. The Jordana Tishia, is that how you say it? Cosmetics, a lip gloss. This is in Butter Candy. Oh, I love the color TMI. I've been wearing um, Butter Candy a bit more, but if I want a lighter version or if I wanna layer them up together, they're beautiful too. We're gonna go with Butter Candy today. This is like basically a pigmented gloss. So it's a gloss with color, so smooth, not sticky, comfortable on the lips and the color is perfect. And it smells amazing too. It almost smells like sweet. 
Um, but I feel like it just blends perfectly in with that lip liner. And this is obviously a bit more of a darker nude, which I've been loving at the moment. These glosses though deserve more love, I'm telling you, because the formula, just the color range, everything about them, obsessed. And obviously they have more colors as well. They do liquid lipsticks. I love me a gloss, but this is the this is my perfect nude. Like if I was to ever come out with lip products, it would be like this. And last but by no means least, let's add in my little faux freckle things that you guys know I like to do at the moment. I'm gonna take my misguided brow marker. I either use like a brown brow marker, a brown eyeliner. I do like it to be like liquid though and not powder because I feel like it shows up more and lasts longer on the skin and it won't brush off because it dries down. One right there. I also like one underneath my eye, on my chin here and then above my brow, just like that. Then of course, we've got to hit it with some setting spray. Urban Decay All Nighter, a fresh one. Ugh. I use this stuff all the time. This has to be probably my favorite setting spray because genuinely I notice a difference in the hold of my makeup and I always go back to this one. So any other recommendations, let me know, but this one is fire. I spray enough that I kind of get like wet, <laughs> let her dry and then we will be done. Guys, that is it. That is literally how I've been painting my face at the moment. And I promise when I'm just sat down doing it and not filming, it takes me like half hour, which is pretty good. It doesn't feel too much, you know? And it, I feel like it doesn't look too much either. It's kind of just like the perfect balance, especially if you're someone who likes wearing makeup like I do. You know, like an all or nothing type of person, I feel like this kind of covers that basis. So everything I use will be down below guys. And of course, eyelash shades and stuff as well. I love you guys and I'll see you soon.